If you've ever lived in a house where you needed an extra blanket just to make it through winter, or worse, where your summer AC bill skyrocketed like it's trying to leave the Earth's atmosphere, you've probably thought about insulation. And if you're in the middle of a renovation or building a new home, you've likely come across two names, spray foam and fiberglass. These two are the heavyweights of the insulation world, and today we're going to pit them against each other. Not in a boxing ring, but in your walls, your attic, and maybe even your garage. We'll explore how they work, how they compare in performance, cost, and longevity, right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. What even are spray foam and fiberglass insulation? Fiberglass insulation is probably what most people picture when they think of insulation. Those big fluffy rolls or pink cotton candy looking bats. It's made by spinning molten glass into extremely fine fibers. Kind of like how cotton candy is made with sugar. These fibers trap pockets of air, which help slow down the movement of heat. It's lightweight, flexible, and has been the industry standard for decades. You've probably seen it exposed in basements or attics. It's easy to install and relatively inexpensive, which is part of why it's so popular. Spray foam, on the other hand, is a newer player in the game. It's made by combining two chemicals, usually isocyanate and polyol resin which react and expand rapidly when sprayed. The foam then hardens into a dense solid barrier. There are two main types, open cell, which is soft and spongy, and closed cell, which is rigid and offers a higher insulation value. Spray foam doesn't just fill the space, it fills every little crack and crevice. It's like insulation on steroids. When it comes to sheer performance, spray foam tends to dominate. It has a higher R value per inch than fiberglass, which means it resists heat flow more effectively. Closed cell spray foam boasts an R value of around 6 to 7 per inch, compared to fiberglass, which sits around 2.2 to 3.8 depending on the type. That means you can achieve the same level of insulation with less thickness using spray foam. But performance isn't just about our values. Air sealing is a massive factor. Air leaks can account for a significant portion of energy loss in a home. Spray foam creates a nearly airtight seal, which prevents drafts, moisture, and allergens from sneaking through walls and ceilings. Fiberglass, unfortunately, doesn't seal air gaps unless it's used with an additional air barrier like caulking or foam boards. That's where many homeowners run into trouble. They install fiberglass thinking it's enough, but they still feel the chill of winter or the humidity of summer seeping in. Installation is another big differentiator. Fiberglass is DIY friendly. You can buy it at the hardware store, cut it to size, and lay it down yourself with a utility knife and a bit of patience. It's simple, but also forgiving. If you mess up, you can reposition it or patch it. However, it can be itchy to work with, and you really want to wear gloves, goggles, and a mask. Spray foam, on the other hand, is not something you want to tackle on your own unless you're a trained installer or enjoy the chaos of foamy chemical explosions in your attic. It requires professional equipment and expertise, if not done correctly, it can off-gas, expand unevenly, or even trap moisture if the surfaces aren't properly prepped. That said, when professionally installed, it's fast and extremely effective. The foam expands quickly, sets in minutes, and transforms any drafty nook into a sealed, energy-efficient pocket. Now, let's talk money. Fiberglass insulation is cheap, like really cheap. It costs a fraction of what spray foam does. For many homeowners or builders on a tight budget, that makes it an obvious choice. 
It gets the job done, and you don't need to sell a kidney to afford it. Spray foam, in contrast, is significantly more expensive. Depending on the type and region, it can cost two to three times more than fiberglass. But before you write it off as overpriced fluff, it's worth considering the long game. Spray foam can drastically cut your energy bills over time. It also increases the structural rigidity of walls and helps prevent mold by reducing moisture. So, while the upfront cost is higher, you might see savings in heating and cooling costs, fewer repairs, and better indoor air quality. It's the kind of investment that pays for itself over the years, but only if you plan to stick around long enough to reap the benefits. In terms of lifespan, spray foam takes the crown again. Once it's in, it's there for good. It doesn't settle or sag, it resists water and pests, and it doesn't need to be replaced for decades. It essentially becomes part of the building's structure. Fiberglass, while still fairly durable, can degrade over time. It can sag, compress, or get displaced by rodents or moisture. Once it's wet, it loses its insulating properties and may even grow mold. And in older homes, it's not uncommon to find fiberglass that's been compromised, doing little more than filling space without really insulating. So if you want a set it and forget it option, spray foam is your friend. But if you're okay with a little upkeep and potential touch-ups over the years, fiberglass still holds its ground. So what's the verdict? Which insulation reigns supreme? The answer really depends on your priorities. If you're building a high-performance, energy-efficient home and you're willing to invest more up front, spray foam is hard to beat. It insulates, air seals, strengthens, and lasts for decades. It's particularly great for extreme climates or homes with tricky architectural details. But if you're budget conscious, doing a renovation on your own, or just need a reliable solution for now, fiberglass is still a solid choice. It's been around forever. It's easy to work with, and it does a good job, especially when installed correctly and paired with proper sealing. At the end of the day, both of these materials have their place. You might even find that a hybrid approach works best. Spray foam in key areas like rim joists or around windows, and fiberglass bats in walls or attics where budget matters more. Insulation might not be the flashiest part of building or renovating, but it's definitely one of the most important. It keeps your home comfortable, reduces your bills, and can even impact your health. Whether you go with spray foam, fiberglass, or a combination of the two, what matters most is choosing the right product for your specific needs and making sure it's installed properly. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.